it's James Gall again. I'm right here in God's Acre, which is a cemetery where many of the Moravians historically are buried. And you go, what? you're sitting on a tombstone. What are you doing? Well, when we came on our prophetic intercessory tour, I think it was in 1991, we came up through here. All of a sudden, I didn't know what I was doing. I just felt led to stop. We stopped. We paused. And I ended up right here on this tombstone right here. Now, this marker was not here then at that time. Communism had just lifted. And this was not open. It was just newly open at that time for people to come and visit. Fascinating where I ended up. And I knelt here in prayer. We knelt in silence. And we confessed the generational sin of the church historically dropping the baton of prayer. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I was sitting on this tombstone, and I'll mention who it is in a moment. And he spoke to me out of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and he said, Can these bones live? All of a sudden, I understood Ezekiel 37 in a way I never had, and I, it's been one of my favorite chapters all my life. Because I understood Ezekiel's response, because he said, in King James, he said, Thou knowest, Lord. In other words, it's like, Hey, I didn't know it was up to me. I think it's more up to you whether these bones can live or not. And he was admitting humility and dependency. Thou knowest, Lord. And I remember when he asked me, he said, Can these bones live? Can that history be brought forth again? The prayer, the missions, the excellence, the heart for Israel, men and women. I know we pondered here and we confessed quietly, the sin of the church of dropping the baton of prayer. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me that we could get up and proceed up to the watchtower. And then I looked and lo and behold, where was I? I was right here on this tombstone. It might not mean anything to you, it does to me. The name is Christian David. He was born in 1690. He only lived to be 41 years old, and with the passing of my great wife, Michael Ann, 20 months ago, I have some different perspective on life and eternity right now. Bear with me for a moment. It's not the length of your days, it's the depth of your impact that matters. Christian David was called the Moravian Moses. So he was acknowledged as the prophet amongst the renewed brethren, the renewed Moravians. Wasn't it amazing that of all places that I happened to light upon by chance was upon the Moravian prophet? And I kneel here again in pondering and in wonderment. And I say back to your heart, God, what you spoke to me those years ago, can these bones live? And since that time, the prayer movement had escalated. Watches of the Lord have been come forth across the face of the earth. Houses of prayer, 24-7, 365 have come forth. But I come here to push a restart button for my own life and for the life of those who partner with us in prayer storm around the world. And we pick up a prophetic mantle for such a time as this. And we're asking for Christian Davids to arise. Christians who have the heart of David for the restoring of David's tabernacle, the book of Amos and the book of Acts. That all believers have free access before the throne of God for worship and prayer. And the Levitical priesthood would arise for such a time as this. So thanks for joining in with me on part of this little pilgrimage of history and of prayer because it's about the presence of the one. So this is not about Christian David. His life was only 41 years long. This is about the life of another man who lived shorter than he. He lived only 33 years in earth. And it's not the length of your days. It's the depth of your impact. So think about that as you live your life. Maybe you will be a Christian David in your generation.
a Zinzendorf or an Anna Nitschmann. But whatever you do, let your light shine in darkness in your generation so that it's not the length of your days, it's the depth of your impact that you leave of the light of the morning star rising in your heart of Yeshua of Jesus because he is the lamb who was slain. So we pray and we call forth once again that these bones can live again. And we call forth the generational transfer, the spirit of prayer, of missions, so that the lamb would receive the rewards of his suffering. And that Christian Davids would arise, would arise and come forth into our purpose and into our destiny. So I challenge you to arise with me and be one of the new Davids. Zechariah 12.10 is where I leave us right now. May the spirit of grace and supplication be poured out upon the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And then they will look upon whom they have pierced and they will weep over him as over an only son. This is James Gall with Prayer Storm. Thanks for joining in. By the way, pass this on to others and let them be a part of the hour that changes the world.